Erev Tov Chavrin, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live here October the 4th, 2017 here in the evening. And friends, we're really getting into some very interesting things that are happening in the Middle East. Russia and the United States very much on edge right now. And uh, it, it could easily things could spiral out of control. We certainly hope that that does not happen. Uh, and we're going to be looking at this from a prophetic standpoint this evening. But before I get into the prophetic side, let me let you see what's happening, what's going on right now. Uh, if we take a look at the map in behind us here, and this is from chaos.gr, uh, it's showing Syria, it's showing the layout of where different forces are, are actually at at this time right now. We have Syrian forces down here near Dada. Uh, we have uh, the United States, al Tanf, also Al-Zakaf. Uh, we have ISIS and Al-Bakamal. Uh, Al Mayadeen, and of course, still in Deir Azor, where both the the Syrian Arab Army, the Russian forces, as well as U.S. backed Kurds and the Free Syrian Army are also all in a standoff in that region. There, well, things kind of flared up here just uh, the last couple of days there, and Russia is accusing the United States of aiding and abetting ISIS because ISIS has been working, according to Russia, inside that 50-kilometer buffer zone that the United States set up at Al Tanf. Now, those of you that watch Israeli News Live, have been watching us for a while, will know that we reported on this before mainstream media, media ever did, that the U.S. had a large contingent of forces there that had moved across uh, into uh, Syria. Also, huge contingency of forces here down just south of Dada. Uh, the U.S., uh, the British also have forces there. The Germans even having forces finally moving their entire military base from Turkey into Jordan. And as we mentioned before as well, the U.S. had also brought in a huge shipment of military equipment into Lebanon, uh, courtesy of the president there, and a huge shipment of, of military forces down at the Gulf of Aqua by the port of Jordan. It has been looking like, uh, even with Norwegian forces that had crossed, special forces crossing into Al Tant from the Iraqi side there, that the U.S. had been working on surrounding Damascus, taking down Bashar al-Assad in a, in a very near possible confrontation. That all began to change when, the, with the help of the Russians, Russia really helped uh, President Bashar al-Assad push forward and move back the ISIS militants, uh, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, uh, all the different fighting factions, and as far as ISIS, has freed 87% of the land there. But more and more, strange little things keep happening that make us wonder uh, whether or not President Trump really knows what's going on in this country here. Now, President Trump is, is commander-in-chief. He's going to support the American forces and what the military advisors are saying, but I cannot help but think that this is a deep state project uh, because President Trump has talked too many times about trying to normalize relationships with Russia, but that keeps getting thrown under the bus, and the deep state is definitely not going to let that happen. And as I watch what's happening now from the accusations from the Russian generals there, I am beginning to wonder that the deep state is not trying to provoke Russia into a direct confrontation for more than one reason. One would be, though, to take out uh, Damascus, take out Bashar al-Assad, and maybe even to go ahead and deal with Russia and to try to break the Russian uh, uh, government as well, the superpower that they are because it is hampering on uh, the banking system there and they don't want to have the petrodollar changed out for something else which Russia is pushing majorly to do that. All right, so let's take a look and see what's actually going on here. Uh, in, in another article right here, this is on the uh, confrontasia.com. Uh, it states here, and by the way, let me just share with you. Uh, oh, I don't have it up there now, but uh, let's see. I don't have that on there. Anyway, uh, Russia has accused the U.S. forces of providing intelligence to Daesh and uh, Talqafria Tal uh, terrorists in eastern Syria. Washington is clearly flirting with terrorist group. The main obstacle to completing the defeat of Islamic State in Syria is not the military capability of the terrorists, but the support for them and flirtation with them by the United States. Major General Igor Kanashkinov, a spokesman for the Russian Defense Ministry, said on Wednesday. Kanashkinov made the comments after a group of Syrian forces came under a series of attacks by Daesh in the province of Del Azawar, where Syria is trying to push the terrorists out of the last strongholds in the region. The Russian general said the attacks on the Syrian government forces had come from an area near the border with Jordan, 
where the U.S. maintains a military mission. Kanashkinov said Daesh had the precise coordinate of the Syrian forces before the attack and that such information could only have been obtained through aerial reconnaissance. Uh, i.e. the United States, in other words. He says here, if the United States views such operations as unforeseen coincidences, then the Russian Air Force in Syria is prepared to begin the complete destruction of all such coincidences in the zones under their control, Kanashkanov said. That's where things could get really out of control and ra rather rapidly. We already know that when the Iranian-backed proxies, uh, Hezbollah fighters, tried to approach uh, this buffer zone that the U.S. set up, which, by the way, was not set up in co uh, coordination with the United Nations Security Council. It was done autonomously by the U.S. Uh, without the uh, compliments of the Syrian government either. And um, But they set up the safe zones regardless there in the southern part of the country. But it's becoming more and more evident that it's, it is for the training of all the opposition forces that are going against the Syrian government. And of course, the U.S. has always had the policy of trying to overthrow Damascus from the beginning. That's not something that's kind of been hidden at all. It's been a fact of the matter. Uh, but the openness about uh, supporting ISIS militants, well, that's not been the case. It's always been that the U.S. is there to try to destroy ISIS. Uh, but more and more, more evidence keeps popping up that it's just to the contrary. So, if this is indeed true, and if Russia does begin to strike these ISIS militants inside this uh, border that the U.S. has created around al Tanf and along the Syrian and Jordanian border, this will definitely justify U.S. counter-striking back Russia directly. And you can't help but wonder that maybe this is exactly what the deep state is trying to achieve. Again, President Trump, is he even aware of this going on? I have no idea. Probably not. Not unless he, lis he listens to Israeli News Live. Is he really going to know what's going on? Also, RT News is reporting, and this is on their Arabic language, so I don't think it's on their regular channel there. Germany completes the transfer of its troops from Turkey to Jordan. And I, I, we were talking about this months ago that this was going to happen. And um, it seemed like to me that what the coalition is trying to do is to get ready to launch an attack on Damascus. And I think the only way they're going to be able to do that is to justify a strike. Now, whether it be Syria that strikes ISIS inside of this buffer zone or whether it be Russia, either way, it would draw in the coalition to have a reason to try to take down Bashar al-Assad. As we remember and we recall, there was one particular uh, Israeli uh, spokesperson there that actually said that Russia should get out while they have a chance or be destroyed. That's pretty provocative. You know, now I've actually made the comment before that Russia is actually an ally of Israel. Some people think that that was kind of nuts that I said that, but you know, I run across this Arabic article, and this Arabic article, by the way, is actually quoting from the Jerusalem Post, but I didn't switch over to the Jerusalem Post. U.S. diplomat, Russia allowed Israel to attack Hezbollah in Syria. Now, this is one of our former uh, diplomats to the United States, says, a uh, reporter from uh, Jerusalem, Reuters, Russia has allowed Israel to attack Hezbollah targets in Syria recently because of its strong influence in the Arab country. The former U.S. ambassador to Tel Aviv said Thursday, relations between Israel and Russia have improved significantly. Uh, and now this, of course, by the way, this article is about a week old anyway. Just let you make, make sure you're aware of that. So Washington is concerned about the reapproachment between Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Dan Shapiro said in a tweet on Wednesday, he added that Tel Aviv had no choice but to work with Russia in, re in relation to Syrian crisis, claiming that it is a superpower that is strongly present in the background of Israel. Israel knows that Russia can curtail its freedom of action in Syria, but Moscow is chosen not to stop those military operations, especially airstrikes against armed shipments destined to Hezbollah in Lebanon, he said in an editorial published in the English language Israeli newspaper, the Jerusalem Post. All right, so here we have former ambassador of Israel stating that Russia is working in coordination with Israel over Hezbollah getting arms shipped into Lebanon. So when I tell you that Russia and Israel are allies, believe me, I'm not just saying it to say it. 
The only way you would ever get Russia to even think of, of, of striking Israel to begin with is if they were forced into that situation because they were attacked in the first place. And I don't think Israel would do that either. I don't think Israel is really planning on trying to intentionally attack uh, Russia in, in the first place there. So when I say this, I, I really believe that that's the case. But, you know, it's, it's a much deeper thing than this. And this is what I want to get into with you guys. You know, I was looking over at Isaiah chapter 9. I've been talking about bringing this back out to you for the longest time. Because what's really going on in Syria is much bigger than what we realize. In fact, before I take Isaiah 9, let me go back to Isaiah 17 real quick. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks, which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Aram shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. So we know Damascus is going to be destroyed. We know that the king, the, the, the fortress shall cease from Ephraim. Why? Because Ephraim, part of the, you have to remember when the house of Israel went into captivity, where did they go? Assyria. Well, which is modern day Syria and also northwest Iraq, etc., and kind of branched all out into other areas as well, Iran. That's why we have so many uh, Jewish people that uh, back during the Ottoman Empire in 1958 that began to come back to the, to the land of Israel and purchase land. Now, that's the right way for us to come home. The, the, the wrong way for us to come home is just to go in there and to, and to drive out all the occupants. God never told us to do that in modern times. You know, during the time when Moses was here with Joshua, yes, why? We were dealing with what? Nephilim in the land. There was a reason for that. But at this point now, what are we doing? We're fighting against our own selves. And yes, I know there's many people would say, well, the lost tribes, they've scattered all the nations. I agree with that. They say, well, Ephraim is in the United States or, or Manasseh is in the U.S. and Ephraim is England, uh, etc. There's all different kinds of uh, scenarios where the tribes may be. But I would have to argue with you on one thing, and that is remnants of those tribes may no doubt have gone to the four corners of the earth as we know. We even know that there were parts of the, the tribe of Manasseh found all the way to the far east. Uh, so yes, I would agree that yes, parts of Ephraim are there as well. But according to Isaiah, when Damascus falls, Ephraim will also be living there. And we find out that the oldest believers of Yeshua, Jesus himself, are what? Are from Damascus. The oldest Christians of today are in Damascus, Syria. They were like two million strong. I think they're only now about 600,000 thanks to all the wars that have been going on supported by the U.S. and, and the jihad movement that they have been perpetrating against the Syrian government. Uh, Israel having a little hand in there because well, unfortunately, they just have. We have because we have some corrupted officials in our government. Otherwise, we wouldn't be warring with them. So anyway, so God says here that the fortress shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Aram or Syria, in this case, shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And it shall come to pass in that day that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. And it shall be as when the harvest man gathereth the standing corn and reapeth the ears with his arm. Yea, it shall be as when he gleaneth ears in the valley of Rephaim. Yet there shall be left therein gleanings as at the beating of an olive tree and two or three berries in the top of the uttermost bow. For four out of five of the branches of the fruitful tree saith the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day shall a man regard his maker and his eyes shall look to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not regard the altars, the work of his hands. Neither shall he look at, at that which his fingers have made either of Asherim or the, or the uh, sun images. In that day shall his strong cities be as forsaken places where uh, which were forsaken from before the children of Israel after the manner of woods in the lofty forest, and it shall be a desolation. For thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold. Therefore thou didst plant plants of pleasantness and didst set up slips of, uh, of a stranger. In the day of planting thou didst make it to grow. In the morning thou didst make thy seed to blossom and heap of bows in the days of grief of desperate pain. Do you realize that God is actually putting what is happening in Syria partially to blame on the tribes of Israel? Now, by the way, this is not just uh, placed on modern day Israel either. Because he says, for thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation. This is to Israel. 
all twelve tribes. You've forgotten the God of your salvation, and thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold, which is Christ Jesus. And as a result of this, we have allowed this war and this savagery that is happening in the Middle East today. All right, now I'm going to prove that to you because I want to take you over to Isaiah 9. Now, most people think of Isaiah 9, you think about the coming of the Mashiach, the birth of him. Unto us a child is born. You know, his name would be called the Counselor, the, the Mighty God. You know, okay, we know this here. Drop down to verse 14, though, of Isaiah chapter 9. Also deals with what's happening in the Middle East today. The elder man and the man of rank. Well, let me back up this one a little bit. Let's go to verse 12 in chapter 9. Yet the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord doth cut off from Israel head and tail, palm and branch and rush in one day. All right? Head and tail, palm, branch and rush in one day. All right, now that rush, by the way, has a lot to do with your DNA. The elder, the elder and the man of rank, he is the head. In other words, those leaders of, of our nation are the ones that he's speaking of there. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. Now that is not just in the modern state of Israel, but that deals with the tribes of Israel throughout the entire world. We have Ephraim, Manassas, part of the Christian kingdoms of today. Many of your lost tribes of Israel have become believers of Yeshua. I'm sure many of them, there have been many of them come Muslims that have been scattered throughout the Arabic world as well. So don't think that that's not maybe possibly the case. Sure it could be. But the sad thing is, is that we know that many of them were believing in Jesus because Jesus sent the 12 apostles out to the world to do what? To go to the lost, the, the 72, he sent out to, to what? And his apostles, when he sent them out, he said, go to only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And they did. That's how we ended up with a church when Paul was on his road to Damascus was because Why? They had gone to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and they were going all throughout the lands there and finding them and witnessing to them about Yeshua. And they were believing in him. And this is why the church in Damascus to this day still stands and two million Christians were living in Syria, but now it's down to about 600,000 thanks to these evil wars that are going on, right? So anyway, so when we look at this, we're not just looking at the modern state of Israel, but it clearly is saying the elder, the elder and the man of rank, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. God said he cuts them off. What's he cutting them off from? He's cutting them off from the rush. Okay, he's cutting them off from the palm and the branch. He's cutting them off from what? From that spiritual connection of what is truth. Why? Because they teach lies and they're leading the people in error. For they that lead this people cause them to err and they that are led of them are destroyed. You're letting your leaders, whether it be in America, whether it be in Israel, whether it be in all these other countries that are going on, that are fighting in these wars here, you're leading your people in error and teaching them to go and kill and massacre all the people. Do you know how many, you know how many Jews in New York not too long ago did a rally trying to get the people to wake up to realize that we were never meant to go and war and kill all of our neighbors? Not in modern times. And the news media never even covered it. All right, let me, let me show some more of this. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall he have compassion on their fatherless and widows, for every one is ungodly and an evildoer. Every mouth speaketh wantonness. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So it's not like God doesn't love us, but the thing is, is he sees the way we've become because of our leaders and because of our teachers. And when he talks about these prophets and they teach lies, I'm talking about ministers and the pulpits and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and of course, the leaders as well, presidents and kings and monarchs and potentates and whatever they may have out there. They're all leading the people to straight. And that's what brings us into all these wars. For the wickedness burneth as the fire, it devoureth the briars and the thorns, yea, it kindleth in the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a thick cloud of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts it is the land burn up. The people also are of the fuel of fire. No man spareth his brother. You didn't know that? For those of you that think that going over there and just burning Syria down is the right thing to do, God says, no man spareth his brother. And one snatcheth on the right hand and is hungry. 
and he eateth on the left hand, and is not satisfied. They eat every man the flesh of his own arm. He's talking about destroying it in war, is what he's speaking about here. If you look at it in the Hebrew language, you know, consuming them is what it is. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh. They're fighting against each other. And there are remnants of Ephraim in Syria, but yet Manasseh comes over, which, if it's true, let's say it's Americans, you're fighting against your own brother. You're there having the Syrian government who has stood for the Christians, and you're fighting against him. Manasseh, you are a tribe of Israel. Ephraim, you are a tribe of Israel, and you're fighting against one another. I even say this to President Bashar al-Assad. President Bashar al-Assad, I know you don't want American presence in your country and you want the civil strife to end. And as you said, it's not truly a civil war. And that's true. I agree with you. It's not. But your Christian community is part of the remnant of Ephraim that is living there. And that's according to Isaiah 17. What did he say right there in Isaiah 17? Let's just jump back over to it again. Real quick so you know what God's saying. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. When what? When Damascus is destroyed. Why? See, the burden of Damascus, bowl, Damascus is taken away from being a city. It should be a ruinous heap, all right, which is, causes a chain reaction. The fortress also shall cease, cease from Ephraim, Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. Why? Because Damascus has been that safe haven for the Christians that have lived there. And then, of course, when we go back over here to Isaiah 9, that's exactly what he sees. Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim and Manasseh, and they together are against Judah. <laughs> That's Israel. And, and, the, and my people in Israel, you really think that the U.S. is for you? We are. There are true Christians that are for you. But you know what he's talking about when he says Ephraim and Manasseh, and they're both against Judah? Because look how many secular Christians in America are against Israel. And they're remnants of your own people. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. See, God loves us, but we are in a huge mess. And if something doesn't change, I don't know what's going to fix this problem. So as we leave out of Syria, just I want to share that with you a little bit there. Um, let me go quickly here uh, before we close here. Launching strike on North Korea possible, but outcome would be uncertain is what President Putin is saying about that. President Putin is really pushing for dialogue uh, and is really stepping up to the plate to protect North Korea. Again, not a good thing. And as I said, Kim Jong-un, definitely not a good man right there. But you know, all these drum beats of war, when's it ever going to end? Somebody's got to be big enough to sit down and stop and, and be the true believer, the true Christian and stand up and try to make a change. Uh, military attack on North Korea, whether to succeed, unknown president of Russia says. Another article stating the same thing. Also, another very disturbing uh, news story that just came out on Sputnik today earlier. American soldiers were uh, ambushed in Nigeria. Uh, as far as I know, there's been two Americans that were killed. Possibly a couple of Americans were taken captive as well, as well as the Nigerian forces that they were, uh, that they were with. Uh, and at the, at the, when I first put this together, still not much other information was out about that. The U.S. has confirmed that that actually has been.